Hello, greetings, and welcome everyone to this news video. I am the Ninjaneer. The topics we're covering today are as follows. Zinc 3D batteries. Yasa says 1,000 horsepower per wheel. Aptera update. Rich Rodriguez on Aptera's update. CATL battery breakthrough. Engineering explained on Lucid. Chris Anthony to participate in the AGP conference and things I liked. Let's get going. Alrighty, so this gentleman by the name of Ben Alexander put out a video about a battery technology that kind of leverages the batteries, uh, sorry, leverages 3D printing tech in order to make the battery better. Uh, this particular technology is uh, uh, zinc based, and so we have a situation where uh, zinc is moving into the spotlight in a lot of the ways that lithium and other uh, metals are. So yeah, really good video, just talks about the technology, uh, how it can go 12 million miles and all that kind of fun stuff. So yeah, check it out if you're interested. I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, so there's a lot of types of electric motors out there. Generally speaking, um, Axial Flux is one of them. And this particular company named Yasa has actually put together a wheel hub motor that puts out about a thousand horsepower per uh, motor and so theoretically what you could do is you could put a thousand horsepower in every single wheel of your vehicle and have anywhere from you know 2,000 if you decided to have 2,000 horsepower on a motorcycle for some reason all the way up to you know 4,000 if you have a sports car that has four wheels so um, it's fascinating that this technology is progressing this fast and uh, is this potent I tend to be under the impression that the more power you can put into something, the more efficient you can make it as well. So I'm kind of wondering now what kind of efficiency they could get out of this powertrain in an Aptera. So yeah, that brain was you know going crazy on that. But yeah, in-wheel hub motors with a thousand horsepower per wheel is bananas. And even better is the fact that this thing doesn't weigh that much. So yeah, very interesting article. Check it out. All right, Aptera has done their first news update in a little while. Uh, their monthly updates are apparently coming back. Uh, there have been a couple of people that have talked about this particular presentation already, one of which is Aptera Owners Club. He did, did a play-by-play -play breakdown of these events in the video. So yeah, he talked about, oh, one of the things he talked about was uh, a blurry section of the video. There was a blurry section. Let me go ahead and uh get my resolution right here there we go so there was a section of the screen that was blurry and i don't know if you guys remember when i went to aptera myself and i filmed there was a section that i couldn't film or had to cut out that was proprietary um uh, hardware and so i'm thinking whatever was on that area that was blurred out was probably proprietary um yeah, Aptera Owners Club basically speculated that it could be something uh, something from another company that they can't share and that kind of thing. Like it it nobody knows what it is, but but my guess personally is that it's probably some sort of proprietary technology that uh, they the, the blurry spot right right there. Yeah, that that blurry spot that, that was just on the screen. Um, I think that is probably some kind of machinery or something that they cannot show or do not want to show because they are trying to keep something under wraps so um yeah so they have some stuff that they want to keep secret probably something that they invented and or created themselves uh at least that's what it was when i went and they wouldn't let me uh show this particular thing uh at my aptera tour so yeah that would be my guess Rich Rodriguez is the kind of person that is very meticulous in all that he does. Um, I appreciate his videos very much, and this particular video talks about the things that Aptera has been up to recently, including the uh, the video for the update, the, some of the information in the update. So yeah, very cool information, um, very thoughtful. Uh, his predictions seem pretty solid, so I would say check this video out if you have the time. 
Okay, so CATL has done something kind of crazy with respect to LFP battery technology. They have reduced the cost by 43% and they've increased the energy density by like 10% or something like that. And they have also reduced the, um, the sorry, sorry, they have increased the cycle life. So whatever they, whatever wizardry they did is really good for LFP batteries. And now they are getting really close to lithium ion batteries as far as uh, energy density and cost and things like that. Well, sorry, they were already a little bit cheaper, but yeah, they're getting there on energy density. Um, I don't know how that will affect silicon carbide batteries or whatever in the future. I know that LFP is great for grid storage um, because it's robust and very uh, resilient. Um, silicon carbide is technically more energy dense. Uh, lithium ion is technically more energy dense. Uh, I think silicon carbide has the ability to be a lot less flammable. Um, I have to check on that because I don't know if that's certain, you know, certainly true, but I do know that they have better energy density. Long story short, battery technology is progressing really fast all the time. Um, and this breakthrough is just another in the line of things that we are beginning to understand about batteries becoming the future is that, dude, every uh, thing that they do that changes the way the battery technology works happens fast. And it's usually a fairly uh, legitimate jump. And so I'm under the impression that eventually uh, batteries energy density will be close to that of uh, gasoline and things like that. I don't think it's ever going to actually get there. Uh, maybe I'll be eating those words someday. But yeah, um, at the moment, battery technology is progressing quickly. And uh, it's just proving that the next step in travel, the next step in energy, the next step in uh, the energy economy is going to be electric stuff, uh, batteries and things like that. All right, so I was a little bit surprised with uh, this particular video, Engineering Explained talked about Lucid and how he had a lot of different issues with it, uh, mostly software related, but some hardware related stuff as well. Um, I liked Lucid when I drove it, just like he talked about, uh, just like Engineering Explained talked about how they uh, the, how he liked the, the, the Lucid when he drove it short term, but the long term um, overall picture of the Lucid is apparently not as great from his experience. So yeah, check this video out if you want a comprehensive look at what he uh, liked and didn't like about the Lucid so far. Um, yeah, man, uh, very surprising video, we'll say that. All right, Aptera's co-CEO Chris Anthony to participate in AGP's annual Virtual Electric Vehicles and Transportation Conference. Um, this is a fairly large event here, and uh, Chris Anthony's going to be speaking at it. That's basically um, all there is to that. Uh, give me a moment here, and we'll go ahead and check out the actual event. Uh, we're going to reject all the cookies. We don't need none of them in life. Um, yeah. I'm not entirely certain why they want to keep this so under wraps. Maybe it's for um, exclusive people. I'm going to go ahead and send them an email and see what's going on here. But this is the website for the Alliance Global Partners, um, you know, transportation conference. Um, the event here is not clickable except to say, hey, if you want more information, contact here. So I'm going to contact here and get back to you guys maybe next week and see what they had to say about that whole situation. But yeah. Chris Anthony speaking at this, it's um, an event, <laughs> but yeah, that's about it. All right, the first thing that I liked, I am, uh, again, a Honda fanboy, and Honda launching rockets is really cool. They're trying to get a rocket system that is reusable, um, so they're um, launching and landing prototypes of their rockets, one successfully launched and landed in June. Um, are they trying to take on SpaceX? I certainly hope so, uh, but that has more to do with my spiteful side uh, for his recent, uh, Elon's recent political foolishness. So anyway, um, yeah, this is really interesting that 
other companies are getting into the space race, I guess. Yeah, if there are more companies that can make rockets that are reusable and reduce the cost of getting into space, it's only a matter of time before space travel is more commonplace. So yeah, I am all for that because I want to go to space someday. But um, yeah, it's really cool to see this, um, that there's more than one company out there doing this whole rocket thing successfully. Uh, Honda is not the only company besides SpaceX doing this. It's just this one is notable because I love Honda and it happened very recently. The next thing that I liked was another video by the Electric Viking. He talks about how gas stations in China are starting to become less commonplace, like they're starting to go out of business, they are uh, giving uh, seating ground basically to electric vehicle uh, charging stations because there is no other choice. China is moving to electric vehicles and those vehicles are generally speaking more compelling than any gas powered cars that are out. So, you know, when a technology is good, people adopt it. And so uh, a natural result of that is the fact that gas stations, the uh, the old world way of getting around, old way of transport and refueling your cars and things like that are going by the wayside just because there's nobody to go to those stations anymore. So yeah, it's really encouraging to see that there's places uh, like this and actually kind of seeing this happen in real time in China. Uh, places like Norway that are basically already um, electric vehicle sales only, uh, this happened a long time ago for them. So seeing it in real time is kind of cool. Seeing the, the impacts and the uh, attitudes around how this is happening is really cool. All right, folks, that will be it for this news video. I am once more than engineer. Um, if you like this video, please do all of those YouTube -y things. Help me get to Aptera by going to my Patreon and supporting me there or my coffee got a ko-fi channel and supporting me there um i have exclusive content if you sign up at patreon so yeah uh fun times there i'm going to start releasing content on there uh as early as uh tomorrow actually so yeah uh sign up there i am actually very close to being able to get to aptera um yeah, so I received uh, um, a an email some time ago. Uh, ask they were asking if I could, you know, go down there, and I'm like, oh, uh, I don't have money. So that's how this idea started to start a pay uh, how this idea got going to start a Patreon. It is uh, going way faster than I thought it would. So yeah, I should be able to get up there sometime in the near future, hopefully in the near future. So uh, yeah, support me there if you want to. Uh, if you don't want to, that's fine. Uh, like and share the video, that helps as well. Help me get to a thousand v uh, subscribers because I am so much closer to that than I thought I could be uh, in the time frame that I am. Um, I could, if you guys help me out, get to a thousand by the time this year is over, which is my goal for the year. So help me get to a thousand, uh, support me if you want to. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.